What's up? And welcome back to Opposites Track Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, your girl, and I'm sitting next to... Miguel Ramirez. What's up, everybody? How is your day? How is your week? How is your life? Going. And today, make sure when you guys get a chance, you go to OppositesAttractPodcast.com, share it with the people that you know. When you guys go there, you can watch our podcast there. You can listen to it there. You'll find all of our social media there, so you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all that stuff. You can find all of our information there, and you can find ways to support the show, and you can download our resource link. Yes, and uh, you could do that at... No. <laughs> OppositesAttractPodcast.com, and the resource list is... It is a list of audios, um, videos, Come on, websites. babe, sell this fucking thing. <laughs> My mind is elsewhere. I, I right bet. Now. I bet you guys can't wait about, to get to no. the website to download because you guys are like, "Oh my god, I have to check this out!" Right after, just, just listen. You listen, won't regret it. Listen, Linda's. All it is, it's a resource list of all the good information we've ever read, looked at, reviewed that helped us in our marriage, right. our parenting, finances, all kinds of stuff, all that good stuff. Right? Did you like that hand That's gesture? Good. All, All that, that good, good stuff. stuff. <laughs> That's why you got to watch. <laughs> well, we'll talk uh, We'll talk more about our website and how you can help us out later on in the show. Yes. All so, that good stuff. So what's happening, babe? What's up with you? It's Sunday. We're recording super late. We've had a busy weekend. Mm-hmm. It's been our uh, our it little boy's a, birthday. It, wasn't, it was a fun weekend. We had a lot of fun. It, it was it busy, was but it was, it was good. It was fun, yeah, but it yeah. was busy. Yeah, it was good stuff. So Joey, uh, our son's birthday just passed. Yeah. And so we decided that we were going to take him to the fair for his birthday. Yep. And that's what we did. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. He loves the rides. He turned 11. So uh, last year for his 10th birthday, we went to Universal Studios in Florida Mm -hmm. with my mom. And we spent his birthday out there. And he went on every single ride he possibly could go on. It didn't yes. matter how scary it was or how fast it was. Like, he loved it. He loved it all. Well, this year, he asked if he could go skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? And and we were and I was asking him, I'm like, dude, like, in the tube with the fan? Right. Like, or, like, jumping out of an airplane? Right. And he was talking about jumping, jumping out, of, out an of an airplane. airplane. So, we looked it so up. So, he's going to have to go with my mom. Yeah, we looked it <laughs> up. Uh-uh, I want to go. You want to go? Yeah. All right. Um, we looked it up and you have to be 18 years old in order to do it. So when he found that out, he's like, oh, I remember my, uh, my grandfather, my Nano. He's like, why would you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that was his thing. Like, why, why would you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? I I'm was like, just right. talking to, um, so Audrey has a friend over and they're really good friends. It's really cool to watch them. Yeah, because we hang out. They're very similar. And Audrey has a very good sense of people who she wants to be around. Right. Of people and who she wants to be around. And her friend is a good girl. Yeah. You know, like they're very similar. And I was talking to them about living life without fear. You know, being able to just take go for it like, you know and we were talking about skydiving and she's like oh heck no who's this audrey uh, or noel her noel and i'm and uh, her friend <laughs> and and i told her i said well you know joey who's 11 wants to go yeah. skydiving and she's like what and i and i told her imagine if you know it something that if you you know once it's done you've had the time of your life and yeah. then thinking afterwards you know, wow, what if I would have allowed my fear to get in the way and never ex- doing have that experience? Yeah. You know, but that's stuff that we do all the time, even as adults. So should everybody go skydiving? No. I mean, if if that's what you want to do, yeah, then do it. I what if it scares tell you? I you what everybody... Should you go skydiving anyway? I think so. Yeah? I think so. If it freaks, I'm I'm trying to. They say like, I think, I don't know what the percentage is. Maybe we can look it up. But it's like a crazy percentage of people that get up in the airplane with the parachute and then don't fucking do it. What do you think stops them? Uh, The ground. <laughs> the ground fucking <laughs> stops them. Splat. No. 
Yeah, fucking looking down at the ground. They're like, oh, shit, when the fucking door is open and it's time to jump out. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is that. What's the, wor- no. what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I mean, the fucking lights get cut out. That's the worst that happens. Yeah. Faith. Have faith. <laughs> I guess. But I, but I guess, if, I mean, if you want to fucking do anything, you're going to have to jump, right? Right. Whenever I decide, you know, like the whole coaching thing, just so many things. Do you like that transition? When you. <laughs> See, we're professionals over here. If I feel here. fear. Yeah. It's like, then you got to do it. Yeah. You know, like y- you got to do it. If, if it makes you uncomfortable. Yep. You got to do it. I'm still not fucking skydiving. I don't give a shit. Like, it's just not like yeah, it, it, it would freak me out. I don't know if I'd want it, but I just don't. The question but is, but I don't care to do it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You know, is it because you just mm, don't care to do it or is it because of fear? Now, if you just don't want to do it, then why do it? Yeah. But if it's something that you're like, oh, I want to do it. But then, you know, you have that sense of fear like, oh, I, I, I don't know. I, you know what? The other thing is I don't. I don't think there's like a working up to fucking skydiving. It's not like you could be in a fucking helicopter and jump off at 300 feet and then work your way up and then jump out a little higher and then you land in the water and then eventually you get a parachute. Like there is no working in this shit up, like working up to it. It's like you get up in an airplane, Mm -hmm. you're 15,000 feet and you fucking jump. You know what I mean? I wonder if that would help break other fears though if you push yourself to do it i'm sure well all these anytime you have like an accomplishment or you do something difficult or something like that that fucking freaks you out and you do it anyway i think there's always like benefits from that stuff Mm -hmm. you know because you can always apply it to something else kind of like jujitsu applies to so many different things even though it's not jujitsu you know Working out applies to so many different things. Running, hunting, freaking, there's a lot of stuff. You know, that. but that, I think skydiving is one of those fucking, it's one of those extreme ones. We should interview um, our niece about skydiving and how she felt yeah. after. And I, if it helped her with, in certain areas of where she felt fear. Something that was stopping, you know, something that she wanted to, to do that stopped that she did not accomplish because of fear. You know, that kind of rem- it just makes me think of something different. But I think there's so many things that happen in life, kind of like skydiving or jujitsu or any of these things where you can have an experience and you can learn from these experiences. These experiences can help you in your life. But only if you're aware of what's happening. Because if not, skydiving could just be fucking skydiving. Jiu-jitsu could just be fighting and doing jujitsu. But if you're not thinking and present and like looking at how this shit, oh, this is kind of like life. This is kind of like, you know, other stuff. You know what I mean? But if you're just not aware and you're not really thinking that way, it just it's just an event or an experience that happened. Right. You're like, oh, yeah, I went skydiving once. It's not like, oh, I went skydiving at one time. You know, it kind of reminded me of this one time that I was doing something and I had to fucking just take a jump and go for it. Mm-hmm. And then once I did, it seemed it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And I right. f- found that everything was going to be OK or something or whatever. You know what right. I mean? I was watching this video right before we started recording. And um, of course, send it to me. There has to be. A advertisement plane okay and so it's called it's from alan watts and it's called it's it's only a game like it's a game and what he's referring to is life and how if we would make everything a game it wouldn't things won't be as painful yeah you know, and he gives an example of washing dishes because how many people love to wash dishes? Right. You know, most people, they look at, you know, the, the stack of dishes and they're like, 
oh, I got to wash all these dishes. Yeah. And he talks about like being present and being in the moment. And instead of resenting washing the dishes, you make it a game. And he says, if you pay more attention to washing one dish at a time, and if you pay attention to how the water feels running through your fingers or, you know. Sounds <laughs> exhilarating. <laughs> You've never done that when you took a sh taken a shower? Like just. Maybe taking a shower. <laughs> not fucking washing dirty dishes. You know, but he talks about but making yeah. a dance out of it. Yeah. You know, instead of hearing your mom's voice, like, make sure you wash the dishes and you wash them correctly and blah, 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 blah. You know, just listen to the sound of the water running, the sponge, the way it sounds against the, you know, if you're using the green side to scrub, how, how that sounds. Are we going to do that right now? And like make it a game. <laughs> yeah. And then the water running. No, that's dripping. Know. But he just, you know, he's just like, life is a game. Yeah. You know, and just, you know, stop taking things, you know, so serious. Just make, make it fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, and the way you look at things too, he's like, when you're living in the moment and in the present, you will appreciate everything that you do. Right. Just to be alive is a gift. Yeah. Speaking of living in the moment, and kind of like the skydiving thing, how I was saying, like it could you could get something from it, or it could just be a skydiving experience, or you could just train jujitsu and fight, or you could learn life lessons from it, or you could be a, a runner that just runs, or you could, you right. know, learn things from it. Like you can do it, yeah. right? Because you want to lose weight. Yeah. Or you're trying to get healthy. And some people Do you know what I think? M maybe I don't know. Like be Training for the tournament and everything, like, I kind of think about being a martial artist, you know, and, like, what a martial artist is. And I think that's where the difference is. Because if you just train and it's a hobby and you're not really, like, it's just, you just show up to get a workout in, which some people do. Um, but it, it's kind of tough. I don't know if you continuously keep going back if it's just a workout to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think at some point it changes. But... When it's like something that you're really focused on, that's when it kind of changes. It's not just working out. It's not just doing moves. It start You start thinking about it when you're not doing it and it starts applying to other things. You know, and I think that's what happens with running. Like if, if you just run a couple miles a day to stay in shape, that's different than if you're a runner. You know what I mean? Because if you're a runner, you've had the situations where your feet hurt. You've had the situations where your back's bothering you and you keep running. But when you push through those things... That's when those other lessons come from running that you wouldn't get if you're just kind of like running for working out. You know what I mean? Hey, when you run, when you're starting to feel uncomfortable, I want you to take your focus somewhere else. Instead of focusing on the pain in your knee or the pain in your ankle. In your back or whatever. Yeah. Right. Why don't you focus on your surroundings? Focus on the beautiful trees, focus on the butterfly. There's always yeah. butterflies around here. There's always here. butterflies. Focus on, you know, just your surroundings and be present there. Yeah. And see if that helps remove some of the discomfort that you're feeling when you're running. Because what I've noticed, <clears throat> like, you know, me being at the gym, like we, as we mentioned, we took our son to the fair. And uh, there's more to talk about on that. But Dude, for real, it's like I've been working out and feeling good and, you know, I've been restricting what I eat, but if I want something, I'll have a piece of it or I'll have some, right? Yeah. So when we were at the fair, I had that Indian fried bread, yeah. right? And I gave you some, which made me feel better. You're going to get back to the run, gave right? you a little bit, yeah. right? And then I had... Um, <laughs> well, is it a banana split with the fried, the fried banana. banana? From the fair? Holy and Joey... Shit. Joey tore that up. So yeah, he did. helped me not eat at all because he did eat most of it. But instead of beating myself up about that, because that's what we do, right? Yeah. When you, you know, you are not able to make a run for whatever reason, you beat yourself up. Yeah. Right. 
And instead of beating myself up Saturday morning, when you got up to go to jujitsu, I got up and I went to the gym. Yeah. And that helped release, I guess, some of that guilt that I was feeling because I still worked out. Yeah. But during that workout, I was pushing myself. And instead of focusing on the discomfort of, you know, what I was feeling, I was focusing on the health benefits of it and looking at the positive side of me being at the gym. Yeah. And I guess I think that's a, that's a good way to look at it. But I think running is a little bit different too. Running is something that if you, if you ran and you ran any length of distances, it doesn't matter what you think at a certain point, like it's going to suck. Like there is no fucking birds chirping and butterflies flying around that doesn't help you catch your fucking breath. There's times when you're just like, this is that part of the run. Yeah, does not sound fun. And there's, <laughs> but I don't think that, I think what makes life harder is that we want to run from that part of the run. Mm. When maybe instead of trying to fucking make it something that it's not, <laughs> accept it for what it is. It does fucking suck. It does hurt. But you need to keep fucking running. Because not everything's always going to be great. Okay, Sometimes you're going to have to feel. I'm, no. just, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, like, like jujitsu is one of them. It doesn't matter yeah. what fucking great thoughts you're going to have when you're fucking being folded up and smashed and getting the breath taken out of you. There is no butterfly flying around that's going to help you in that situation. You just got to know that I've been in this situation before and I didn't die. Mm -hmm. That I can hang on just a little bit longer and maybe I can work my way out of it and I can get better. But Sometimes it just fucking mm -hmm. sucks and you got to suck it up. Well, <laughs> I found out this past week that I am very good at well, covering that before, stuff up. <laughs> before we get into <laughs> Before we get into that. Um there was something that you were talking about like being present and we were we were talking about how we've had the kid. We had we it was Joey's birthday. We took him to the fair and there was just kind of like the immediate family, me and you, him and his sister. And we all went out. We had a great time. We had some great, great moments there. Just being with the fan. I don't know, man. It, it, it's different. Just being aware, like, I don't know, just being in that moment and uh -huh. enjoying Were you it. like this before? No. Were you? Maybe I'm just getting old, but maybe you're getting, we're, we're getting older. I, I, it's part of life, babe. Maybe it's just being married to me that's helping you. Probably. It's a big part of it. <laughs> I'm sure that's a big part of it. Oh, yeah. But it, sometimes uh, but it I can drive him bananas, too. It, you, you have, sometimes you do. <gasps> you have. You no, just said you not, have. Not that you have. Like, well, the thing is that you've been coaching. Like, we've been talking about you try to get fucking spiritual. And I want to. I'm getting ready for a fight. All right. <laughs> I ain't trying to work shit out right now. I'm trying to fuck people up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I was just kind of thinking like maybe it is as we get older or the more moments that you have or you start realizing shit. I think everybody has moments. We just miss them a lot. Yes. Yes. But you can also create a life where there's more moments yes. to be had. Yes. And lately, I mean, just yesterday I was telling you like we had because we we, we took the kids to the fair. And it was Joey's birthday, and we were like, well, he's had a lot of friends here in the neighborhood. They're all on spring break. It is his birthday. Why don't we just invite some of the kids over? We'll grill some hot dogs, and they can jump in the pool and just go swimming. And then it started storming, but it was like a sun shower. Oh, it was beautiful. And we had all kinds of kids over. Then they all took the party to the street. Mm -hmm. They had Nerf guns. They're all fucking playing outside. The sun was out, and it was sprinkling. And then it's like a huge rainbow that just kind of, like, shoots over the neighborhood mm -hmm. you know while the kids are outside and for a second there it's i'm like just like dream. all right i need to fucking just enjoy this right now mm -hmm. you know and it's just watching them and we're just kind of hugging in the front yard in front of the car but i think that these these things happen but you can miss them mm -hmm. oh you there's can. i i know that there's been I, you know what i was kind of thinking about yesterday 
I know that there's been times like that where I've been inside. I was kind of thinking that. Like, I know I've heard a storm, and I know it's been beautiful outside, and it's like, fuck it, I'm just going to stay inside. When I probably should have just went outside and been there by myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like... Uh, and that would have been something that I would have I remembered just standing there by myself, just enjoying the rain, enjoying the weather, just whatever, you know? When uh, there were a few moments at the fair where... Oh, you took a picture of it. Yeah. You know, where I'm walking and both of the kids just have their arms wrapped around. They're me. both hugging you, one on each side. Right. And we were all getting on the rides together. And what felt good was that the kids wanted us to be a part of it. You yeah. know, and Audrey's 13. She's a teen. And Joey turned 11. And they still want us to be around them. They still want us to be by their side. Yeah. You know, when we got on the rides together, just sharing those moments where, oh my goodness, where we could not stop laughing. Yeah. And we were all there together experiencing it. We were all switching up on the rides. So like some rides I was with Joey, a couple rides I was with you, a couple rides I was with Audrey you know, and Joey was sitting with you and then you would sit with Audrey and it, it was awesome. But all of those moments happen because we are learning to live in the now. Yeah. That's I what it is. I took Joey on the zipper, which like that, that in itself, like I told him, I was like, dude, I used to go on this ride when I was your age. And then to be able to go on the ride with him was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. So, yeah, there was there, there's something that I don't know. Recently, we've talked about and you've been saying like there's been little signs here and there. Right. When we go to pick the kids up from somewhere or when, you know, the kids are with somebody or somebody will say something about one of our kids and they're like, oh, they're so sweet or they're so thoughtful or they're so polite. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I I really don't feel like we're any different and we're not any different than anybody else but little by little i'm starting to think that even though we're not different than anybody else we are doing things differently and it's not the same there's a few things that really make a big difference and they've made a huge difference i think in our family like just the way our kids are turning out, and who who the you, you guys fucking know. Next week it might be a fucking shit show. We might be like no. we we don't know what's going on. Yeah, but, but we're doing good. We're doing. But the thing is that no matter what, is that when something happens, it's easier for us to recover, and also we notice things because we're involved. I think one of them is the dinner, and we've talked about it so many times. Not just dinner, but we do. We try to. It's every chance we get. It really is. Every chance we get, the only times that we don't, and and even still, even if we're not all together, we still sit down with whoever's there, Mm -hmm. you know? Because even if I'm not eating and I'm making something for Joey, I'm still in the kitchen. I'm still sitting there. I'm I'm right there with him, Mm -hmm. even if I'm not eating. Or if if you're not home, we're all eating together. If I'm not home, I'm sure you guys are eating together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But more often than not, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, every opportunity we get, we sit down all together to sit down and eat. And I think just doing that has made it so much easier for us to have talks about stuff. Even the conversations that we have, you know, while I'm coaching, I'm sharing what I'm learning. I am doing right. What I'm learning. We're talking about everything. We're talking about our work. We're talking about things that frustrate us. We talk about how we're going to fix things. We talk about struggles that we're having. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All of that. And it's just, it's leading by example. We're not just telling them to do. We're showing them that we're doing. They're witnessing our struggles. Right? right? They're witnessing like our challenges. They're seeing us grow from those challenges. Yeah. When we make a mistake, 
we apologize to each other. A lot of times the lessons that we're talking about, things that we realize while like throughout the week, we're talking about these things while we're having dinner with the kids. Right. Like a lot of these things, they, I mean, except for the sex stuff, but they hear and they understand a lot of the things that they we're talking hear, to you guys about. But. Yeah, probably that too. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, do they our best. They probably know about that too. <laughs> I'm just saying, but like all these things get talked about at the table. Right. And I think that's been a huge, a huge benefit to our family. Yeah. Is there anything else? So Audrey and her, you know, her friends stay in the night and I'm in the kitchen and I decided to make a big breakfast. I'm talking about pancakes, potatoes, yeah. eggs, bacon, waffles for Audrey or um, like French Denny's toast. Up in here. And while I'm in the kitchen and I have music on when we're in the kitchen, we have music on, right? Like yeah. it's just, we try to make, I think we're fun and I think we, the, you know, the kids see that yeah. and they join in on the fun. But Audrey's friend, they were both at the table and Audrey's like, Mom, when you were our age, did you ever <laughs> draw a picture or write down oh my God. your dream boyfriend or whatever? Yeah. And I started laughing. And Noelle, I could tell, was not expecting Adriana to let me in on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because okay. that type of re the relationship Audrey and I have right we are close but i am mom first right yes i am mom first and she knows that i'm not that mom who you know is more of a friend i am a mom first right? like you guys can be friendly right you know but we you're her talk mom. Right. but right. she right. knows right. yeah right there's a difference right and so noelle was not and by the way noelle's mom and, and i'm throwing out names here um, and, and the thing is that a lot of times parents feel like if they're more friendly, it's going to bring them closer to their kid, which is a mistake. Yeah. Because kids are looking for a parent figure. Right. Not a friend from their parents. Right. They have friends for that. So her friend's mom is a teacher at their junior high. Yeah. And Adriana actually has the mom As for a an teacher, English yeah, class. Yeah. yeah. So, you know... I'm sure her friend was not expecting Adriana to open up to me about... Her dream, what's, her dream. What's going to be shared? And so Noel, her, her friend, dude. just like got in her seat, and she just like covered herself up. Like, are you kidding me right now? You about to tell her, right? And and I said, you know what? I did have some credentials. Yeah. <laughs> I when at your age, I don't know about your age, but I I knew I had it in my head, right? And uh, and I'm like, well, I want to see, I want to see, because they drew him. Yeah, in a, you know, in a sketch pad. Right. And they did such a good job. Anyways, no, they did really good. Adriana brings it down and I'm reading over some things and I just, I'm just laughing because it's just the funniest shit ever. But I could tell like her friend was like, that's cool. <laughs> you know, that she can talk to me openly yeah. and then me not, you know, like really? make her yeah. feel embarrassed or ashamed or whatever, but that I related to her. And then I saw it. Yeah. So and she, yeah, they, they drew the dream guy <laughs> and he wasn't and wearing he a look? shirt. Right, right. <laughs> he wasn't wearing a shirt. So yeah. this was like the dream dude. Yes. And he had curly hair. Yeah. You were, you've been saying Lucky on the hair. last couple podcasts that she's going to have high expectations. Yes. And she does. Because <laughs> this dude apparently <laughs> lives in the gym. He's got an eight pack, <laughs> you know, I'm but like, he's shit. smart and he's romantic. I oh, mean, yeah. it's, it's he detailed. Rides, he rides horses. He's he doesn't wear shirts. <laughs> <laughs> he's on horseback all the time. Oh, my God. But it was kind of cool for them to, like, let me in. And then I was just joking, you know, with them. And we were hanging out and talking and laughing and stuff. That's but I cool. could tell, like, her friend was like, you know. Like, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. When we uh, so they they both play Audrey and her friend, they play softball together and um, they came. Well, obviously she came over and we're all lefties in this house, so we don't have any righty gloves. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, what? we should have a freaking righty baseball glove or softball glove so that if somebody comes over, they can play, you know, right. just to throw it in the bin right. and have it. So we went to the store and we went to go pick it up. Mm -hmm. And um, when we got back from the store the music was playing in the kitchen mm. and there was a Spanish song on and I could hear like Audrey, like it's a song that she likes. It's one of your songs that, that you like to. And the three of us walk in, 
me, Audrey, and her friend. Uh huh. And I can see like Audrey's kind of like into the music, and I just kind of grabbed her. Really? And we just started dancing. Aww. Right there in front. Of, it was just me and her in the kitchen or like the little yeah. kitchen area. Yeah. And her friend was like right there. And we just danced for like 30 seconds or whatever. And I gave her a kiss and they went off to play. Really? You Aww, know, but it was just cute. like one of those. A little moment. You know what right. I mean? No, it that's was, cool. It was really nice. And and that because I've heard, said it before, it takes a village. Right. Yeah. It takes a village. And. And what I'm talking about is like raising children, right? And there are certain people, <laughs> you know, that I'm okay with um, parenting our kids. Am I one of those people? Babe, are you serious <laughs> right now? <laughs> you know, and so when I go to Joey's friend's yeah. house and I'm like, you know, and he tells me something or they tell me something, I'm like, great, I appreciate it. You yeah. know, or whatever it, it, it may be. And I feel that we have a big influence as well on his best friend yeah and the truth is like the kids that are around here if there are our kids friends like you want the best for them you want them to right. you know and and when they're around like well, every once in a while like if there is something to tell them or something to teach them or like hey you know right. we share something you know right. even if it might be something small right so you used to give me shit, or you still give me shit, about how positive I am. Yep. But before we get into that, make sure you guys go to oppositesattractpodcast.com. Share it with the people that you know. Make sure you guys check out our social media, which you can find there on our website. Um, it's all at the top. You can click. Uh, it has the our Twitters on there, Facebook's on there, YouTube, Instagram, ways that you can follow the podcast on iTunes, Spotify. It's all on our website. And... Uh, when you click, there's a support the show tab at the top. If you're on your phone and you hit the menu button, you'll see the support the show tab. When you click on that, you'll see our Amazon link. Uh, and while you're on Amazon, you can search our merch, which there's not a lot, but you can get some phone cases, pop sockets, T-shirts, stuff like that. Uh, just search opposites attract podcast and then whatever it is, like T-shirt, phone case. We'll figure out a better way to do that eventually. But uh, you can find it there. And also whatever you purchase through Amazon, uh, just do your regular shopping. But when you click on our link and you check out, they give us a little kickback whenever you guys buy stuff. And it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it'll help us out, help us buy some lights, microphones, whatever we need to keep the show going. Um, Can you put that link in the description for them so it's just one click? Uh, you know? I, I could, yeah. I could put it in the description. But our website's also in the description. So when you click on that, you can just click the support the show. Okay. And, that, and it's right there. But um, also, when you click on the support the show link, there's a link to Trust Inc., Yep. And Trust Inc., we are a mobile notary and signing agency. So if you are in the process of purchasing, selling, or refinancing your home, you can request Trust Inc. to be your signing agency. Yep. And you can go to Trust Inc. directly by going to trustinkusa.com. We're also affiliates with Pinwheel, which is the best smartphone available for kids. It has GPS tracking. It tracks the call logs. It tracks text messages. You have to approve all the contacts so you know exactly who your kids are talking to who they're getting messages from, everything gets screened. So I have an app. So all those uh, marketing calls, all the marketing text messages, all that stuff, none of it goes through to the phone. It all comes to your parent portal and you can review it, approve it, deny, obviously deny it if it's all that other spam crap. Um, but the good thing is that your kid doesn't get all that stuff to their phone and uh, they don't have access to the internet, to social media, to all the stuff that's going to keep them addicted to the phone. You get to pick all the apps that get installed, you actually, you have to select the app to be installed on their phone. They can't even install the app. You select it to be installed. So it's a great uh, phone. If you guys want to know more and you want to check it out, you can use promo code O-A-P-T-E-N, all together, all in caps, on pinwheel.com. Yes, yes. And if you would like to buy us a coffee, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod. And what that is, it's either a virtual coffee or a virtual drink. Yep. And uh, also, if you guys would like to give us a call, send us a message. You guys might have heard one of the messages that someone left us a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you guys want to do that, if you have any questions for us or let us know how we're doing, you can call us at 480-331-9846. Yes, yes. So what's up, babe? You were talking about how you're too positive. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to try to turn this one positive too? <laughs> yes. But it, it's not... A bad thing. It's no, not a bad thing. I don't thing. think it is. But because I do monitor my my thoughts, right? Even beforehand, like I would monitor my 
thoughts. But what I found like with my coaching is that there sometimes there are negative thought patterns um, that have to do with healing that comes from the past. But what I was doing, I wasn't recognizing those thought patterns because I wasn't writing them down. Right. Like I wasn't keeping track of like, that's what he had me doing, writing down whatever unuseful thoughts would come to mind and unuseful thoughts are negative thoughts. But now he's kind of getting me to refer to them as unuseful thoughts. Like, is this going to help me or is this going to hurt me? Kind of. Okay. Right. But what when I was talking to him, because I was having problems writing down unuseful thoughts. Yeah. And I was having to really slow down what I was doing to jot down these unuseful thoughts. And once I started to do that, I started to see patterns as well. Like certain thoughts that would that were happening more often than not. Yeah. But because I cover up those negative thoughts with positive thoughts, It was hard for me. Like he gave me some homework and it was so challenging. (laughs) Yeah. Most people probably just could jot down their negative thoughts, especially you. Oh my goodness. You'd be so busy. No. (laughs) Yeah. And I told you, I gave you an example when you were telling me when, right when you started telling me that it's like, I'm going to start writing down all my negative thoughts. And I was like, Hmm, I just had a negative thought. I was like, but I don't know if it wasn't like, because I was working with somebody, I was telling you. Yeah. I was like, and this dude seems like a little bit of a dick, or he's being a little bit of an ass. Yeah. And I was just kind of standing right next to him. And while I'm standing there, I was like, oh, I wish I could just slide my hand up into his collar and just strangle this fucking dude right now. <laughs> but it wasn't like, it was just a thought. It wasn't like, and it didn't make me angry or feel negative. I was just kind of smiling. Like, it'd be nice to fucking choke this dude out right now. But I, I was like, would that be a negative thought? Because it didn't make me feel bad, but it's not a good thing that I was thinking about doing. Right. And some but, negative thoughts just come up. Like sometimes right. there's not really uh, an emotion. I mean, if it's one that comes up constantly, there is an emotion there. You're right. just not picking up on it. But anyways, what he told me, because I was talking about, you know, how people numb themselves, like with alcohol. Like if there's something that's making you feel bad, right? Like there's something maybe that's happened to you and there's an emotion that's attached to that and it's something that you don't want to deal with or you don't want to think about, right? Like there's, most people turn to alcohol, drugs, food. I mean, there's so many things. And what he told me is that, yeah, what he told me is that I cover up my negative thoughts my unuseful thoughts with positive thoughts yeah which is not always a bad thing but when you do that it's harder to get to the 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 issue right the issue of it because i always turn it around it's like you would get a turd of a situation and you'd fucking put lipstick on that turd and be like you want to know what he says what you can't put frosting on dog shit right (laughs) that's what he says it's like a shitty situation you're like here you go oh this is perfect right (laughs) positive positive lining right so that's why this was because i told him i'm like it's very hard for me to write down negative thoughts because i don't have many and it's because i've been so good at just flipping it around right and finding you know but it's kind of like what he referred to was like personal development if any of you have focused on personal development and you know if you've been in a multi-level company that's their focus is positive you know just positive Uh, personal development, like positive thoughts, positive affirmations. But if you don't feel, if you don't believe that, whatever positive thought that you are telling yourself, if you don't believe it in your core, it's like put frost, it's like putting frosting on dog shit. There is a way to get to that belief where you believe it. And so when you say it, there's a meaning behind it. Wait, so are you saying the same thing? What do you mean? Am like I right saying? now what you're what you're explaining. Like when you don't believe it, it's like putting frosting on dog shit. Right. Right. But you could say the same thing and actually believe it. Right. And that's not the same. 
Right. If they're, Is that what you mean? For, for example, <sighs> going through coaching, I always felt good about myself. Yeah. I liked myself, but did I love myself? Was I proud of the things that I've been able to accomplish? Can I look in the mirror and say, you know, like, you're the shit. Like, I love you. I love you, and I'm so proud of you, and I'm so proud of all the accomplishments and everything that you have mm. done to get to where you are today because the life that you're living today, you've created that. You've created this. You took action. God was there to, to suggest, right? Your inner God is there to suggest things and, and you know, so at times will give you a vision but I was the one to take action. If I didn't take action, my None life wouldn't, wouldn't look the way it looks today. Yeah. So giving myself some credit for that. Damn. And when I started, when he got me in that zone and I started to really take in what I've been able to create It's incredible. Wow. That's when I fell in love with myself. That's when I was able to look in the mirror and say, I am so fucking proud of you. Yeah. And actually feel it. Like there's an emotional, an emotion attached to that. That's when the breakthrough happens. When you can, when there's a thought and you can attach that thought to an emotion, that's when it becomes reality. But there's a lot of shit that you have to let go, right? You gotta, there's so much shit that you have to let go. Yeah. I, and forgive yourself for, like just being able to forgive yourself for all the things that you feel you jacked up. Yeah. And just, and loving yourself, you know, even when you didn't make the best decision, but knowing that you're going to be okay. Like everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Have you guys talked about, so now that you, you look at your life, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you didn't feel before, or you just didn't really think about it. So you don't feel like you've accomplished or you feel like you're, you're not where you're supposed to be or you could have done more or whatever. But like you're saying, you kind of sit down and you look at the shit that you've done in your life mm -hmm. and you're like, I have done some things. And you look around and you're like, I'm living a fucking incredible life yes. because of the things that I've yes. done, because of the decisions that I've made, mm -hmm. because of the things that have mm -hmm. happened, because of the decisions that I've made. Right. And you feel grateful. You feel amazing. Yeah. You like you like you're you're capable. Right. Right. And then what? What comes next? Have you guys talked about that? Well, we're doing that now. Because I'll tell you that, like, thinking about it and hearing you talk about it, and maybe it's like these last couple books that I've been listening to. For one is that David Goggins can't hurt me. And that other one, Endure by Cameron Haynes, which is about the bow hunter. Mm -hmm. I hear you talking about it, and I think it's awesome, like, to sit and have that gratitude to, to feel all those things. But at the same time, what does it matter? Because all these accomplishments don't make you who you are. There are experiences in your life mm -hmm. that you've had, mm -hmm. but they're not you. And those accomplishments were from yesterday. And life keeps moving. So it's almost like there's a balance. Because you have to be appreciative of those accomplishments, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop. Okay, so I didn't explain myself right. When I think about my accomplishments, I'm not talking about this house. <laughs> I'm talking about our family. I'm talking about I, I our kids. I'm talking about like the love and the and and just what we have together as a family. I get it. Everything else is extra. 
the house is extra, the being debt free is extra. I understand. All of that. All these things came from what? From work. You didn't this come didn't, from work. Oh no. No. You don't think I worked on who I am today? Oh, oh no. I'm saying like I didn't because I made And I know that you've worked on who you are today. Well, yeah. I know we worked okay, on Okay, so everything. that's what you're talking. No, I, I thought you meant money like no, wages. No, I'm talking work. about everything. Not not just wages. I'm talking about our mentality, our lifestyle, oh, yeah. our everything. Oh yeah. So all the the things like when when like when I look at my life or look back like yeah, I've done some fucking incredible things that most people could only dream of doing. But that's in the past. Like we have life to live. And none of those accomplishments mean anything today. Life keeps going. Right. And you have to like, like, and, and I think one thing is that those accomplishments for one are like a reference of what you have done that you can lean on. Like I have done some of these things. Mm -hmm. We have accomplished. We can have an incredible life. Mm -hmm. And we can continue that. But it doesn't just happen. No, we have, again, the resource list. There's only some books Thanks. that we've there been able go, to read. There you go, babe. That's what I'm There's only about. some audios that we've shared. But you and I have been a work in progress. We're still since, a work in progress. Yes, always. And you're going to continue to be a work in progress because we're either going to grow together or grow apart, right? Yeah. So it's constantly looking how we could become better human beans right like that's what it is it's all about the power of now this book that i'm reading by ed cartoli doesn't he says there is no past and there's no future there's only the now and everything that we've created was in the now yesterday right. when we it were was, living it, was in, it was in the now everything that we do is in the now i think the difference between who we are today and the and who we were yesterday is that we're living in the now we're living in True. the presence, we are taking in every moment that we have together, together and as a family. Yeah. And and I think that's what made a huge difference for myself. That is, was the other thing. Yep. Is And it took me two car accidents in two weeks, totaling two vehicles, looking at one car and realizing I shouldn't even be alive. Right. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I remember, though, you know, those were signs to me that I need to stop. Like I need to slow down. I need to start paying attention because I was everywhere. Your, yeah. Your mind was And I was everywhere. chasing, I was just chasing success, just chasing success because that's what I thought. I thought money equaled success. Yeah. And then once I put my priorities in place, you know, my family, like you guys, are above all things yeah. and you can take everything away. And as long as we are together, that's what matters. No, there's not, you know, when I die, there's not going to be a, a U-Haul following the hearse. You know what I'm saying? I, you, we come into this world naked with nothing and we're going to leave this world naked when no, with nothing. Right. And to imagine that some of us are not, living our best lives. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about fortune. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about love. I'm talking about peace. I'm talking about joy. To think that and to look forward to passing on to get out of this world that you're living in today to get out of this reality you're living in today to only well because there's a thought of something be, better later and what if there's not and this is it and we're all hoping and praying and settling because the the afterlife is going to be so much better and i'm going to have everything then yeah i don't know I don't know about that. You've asked but me that before. Yeah. You've asked me that. You're, you're like, I, I before like, <laughs> when I was very religious and you would ask me, what if? Like, what if, you know, this? What if that? What if there's no heaven? What because, if there's no, because you know. Because this is the thing, babe. Like, I think at a, when, when I really thought about it, when you really understand what that is, it makes you, like, I felt sad. 
almost. You know what I mean? Because it's like, what if somebody just dedicated their whole life to something? Because like I tell you, ultimately, somebody's right about this stuff. But if you dedicated your entire life for something that's going to happen after you die, and it turns out that that's not what it was, you had one shot at this. And at that point, it's over. Do you know what I mean? Like, instead of living, f- and, and it, it, it sounds kind of selfish, but living for yourself, that's why, like, in the past, like, it sounds weird when I say, like, you don't know anybody anything because you have one life. This is your life on this planet. And yes, you have family, you have friends, but when it's over, it's over. At least that's the way I feel, mm-hmm. you know? And to think that you lived in a way to benefit something that may or may not be true or may or may not even happen. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, I felt like it was kind of sad. Like, at the end of the life, you're fucking like, yes. Like, some people are almost looking forward. No, like they, said. yes. Right, it's right. Like, like, it doesn't matter what like, happens to me in like this when world. I, like, because... when I die, it's fucking on now. Right. And it's like, maybe not. Right. And so, if you want both... <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's <laughs> difficult. Are we, are we tackling the the oldest questions? <laughs> well, because, you know, it's like, I know I'm a good person. Yeah. And I am saved. <laughs> and they say, as long as you are saved. No. <laughs> but I'm giving this life right now. Yeah. Like, this is, for me, like, this is my focus now. Live it like this is Just it. To live every day as if it's your last. You know, and living in the now, being present and taking in every moment. And it's been a huge challenge for me, especially those that know know me. I was a multitasker, right? I would yeah. always say like that was my thing. I was proud of it. I could do so many things at once. Loved it. Right? Yep. You used to say that shit Hell all yeah. the time. And you used to t- yep. talk shit to me. You'd be like, you, you can't even fucking chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you tripping over yourself. You're like, look at me. I'll be spinning plates all the time everywhere. And it was a mess. And I felt like a spinning plate. I felt like a spinning plate. Yeah. And sometimes it takes some obstacles To freaking wake your ass up. Yeah. And for me, it was those two car accidents. It's like, all right, God, I I see you. Like, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I saw it as a sign. And I made a commitment that I was no longer going to be that multitasker. Dude, I, yeah. You know, that I was going to start and it was, it took, it was a long process. I mean, those accidents happened in 2018, yeah, right? Something 2018. Like that, yeah. And so I started just focusing on yeah, being you, in the now. When that happened, I remember you like deciding to like, I need to slow down yep. and take it easy. And, and like, I got really my priority straight. Yeah. Yep. I got my priority straight. I, I used to be the yes girl. Yes. 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 And now it's like, well, if it doesn't fit, you know, and if it's not something that I want to do, it's just going to be a no. Right. And there doesn't have to be any reason behind it. That's what I'm learning now. It's just, no, sorry. You know, just, no, I, sorry. I've told you. No, you don't even have to be sorry. It's just, no. Dude, there, and there is something that. And when you say no, sorry, babe, sometimes. You're going to have those people that that throw guilt your way, right? They're going to make you feel bad. I respect it. You know, because like I, I've told you before, like I have a friend of mine that I remember one time I was asking him like, hey, let's go do something. Mm-hmm. And it was the first person that like he people. There's times when you ask him like, hey, you want to go to the movies or hey, you want to go do whatever? I don't know what the fuck. Let's go hit some balls in the batting cages or throw some axes or go to the bar right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. And sometimes you just don't have the money for it. Right. And people are like, oh, I'm busy. Right. They'll make an excuse. Because they don't want to say that they don't have money. Right. 
And I remember a friend of mine one time, like I was like, hey, why don't we go do this? And he was like, I can't. I don't have money. But even still, he was like, it was like, I can't. I don't have money because I'm trying to pay something off. Right. And in that at that moment, I'm like, that's the end of it. Yeah. Like, I'm fucking down with that. Dude. Right. Awesome. Like, I'm fucking ha- I'm proud of you, you know? That's it, huge. But, like, but I've, I had never heard somebody because I know, you know, that right. people tell you, oh, yeah, I'm busy. I got something. It's like he doesn't have money or maybe something else is or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But people don't usually just say that. And there is something I think it feel like it, it made me feel <laughs> when he said it to me, it made me feel like almost like a relief, you know, that for him, like he's just he'll just say it. And I'm sure for yourself, you feel you feel like relieved, like, hey, I'm just it is what it is. You know what I mean? Right. Um, was there anything else on this before we move on? Because um, I wanted to play that video real quick and we can kind of talk about that. OK. OK. So one thing that has we, we were kind of talking about the things that have made a big difference in like our kids lives. A big part has been eating together, like we've said the other thing that I was going to say was that you've already mentioned is just being in the moment and being present. Just being trying aware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just trying to like knowing that these things are happening and being more aware that they're happening around you so that you can like just take advantage, partake, take advantage of these opportunities that are around, like dancing with Audrey when I walk through the door or enjoying the fucking rainbow with the kids outside. All that stuff. One of the other major things I think has also been the cell phones and social media. I think a combination, those fucking three things can change a lot. Mm -hmm. Eating together, just paying attention to your kids, what they're into, talking to them, just being present with them and the social media. Yeah. I think those three things are fucking huge when it comes to parenting. Heck yes. And there is a... It, not not to single out anyone because they all have the way that they do things and they give you what you want. Like we've talked about the algorithms. The algorithms are not evil. They'll give you what you want. And if all you're looking at is puppies and kittens, it's going to give you a shit ton of puppies and kittens. Right. If you're looking at nonstop toxic politics, it's going to give you nonstop toxic politics. Yes. If you're looking at nonstop, you know, gender this and that or, you know, Republican, Democrat, this and that or vaccination, this and that. That's exactly what you're going to be getting all the time. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to play something uh, that I kind of ran across and it's about TikTok. And it's about how TikTok operates in China versus in the United States. And we can kind of talk about it after we listen to this. You know which country made TikTok? China. Do you know that China controls the algorithm of what you see? Do you know this? If you're in America and you open up TikTok, if you're in Britain and you open up TikTok, there is a specific algorithm to reach you that is not in China. If you're in China and you open up TikTok, what they, the Chinese government, wants you to receive as youth, as people using TikTok, are people who are doing good things, achievements, youth making social enterprise, youth becoming successful in math competitions, youth becoming masters of karate, youth doing something with their life. And you are rewarded. That algorithm is that the Chinese government makes you see positive things for social development. Did you know here and in the United States, they, China, send you a different algorithm? Do you know what they send you? All the nonsense that you see. They want you to see girls dancing boys and girls dancing with each other pranks upon your parents pranks upon people how many pranks do you see yeah i'm not saying it's not funny some of them are downright hilarious but if you want to destroy a nation destroy a generation you make them in their mind be rewarded with the dopamine for thinking stupid things are good thinking that this is what you're supposed to grow up doing a large proportion of people grow up thinking that this is what life is about but in china they don't let their children think that Hmm. yeah When I saw that, it's crazy because you look at the U.S. and you look at China and China being communist and like you hear about how all their rules and freedom, like we're all about freedom here and we have all the freedom that we want. Like people, you know, our country has been in a sad place 
with all the things that have happened over the last few years, but you want to be free. This is about the freest place you can live. And when you get everything that you want, that's how your algorithm is. It's giving you a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of nonsense that's keeping you addicted to shit. Mm -hmm. And then you think about China, like that's not freedom, but it's like, who's fucking right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not giving their people freedom and they're forcing them to watch positive shit. Right. And here we have freedom and all we do is look at dumb nonsense. Who the who is right? That's why I mean I'm sure like with Adriana and her phone, she doesn't have access to social media, but she does have a tablet, right? Yeah. But I know that she doesn't have profiles within TikTok or yeah. Facebook, right? Yeah. She'll go watch some like on YouTube on YouTube. She'll or find like the popular stuff and watch right. a little bit of it. Yeah. But I, th I mean, just think of how we are as adults when it comes to social media. It's very hard having a podcast, just being very, you know, honest and open with you all. In order for us to get known, we have to figure out these algorithms. We got to do the pranks. We, we got to do like all the little things on the TikTok. social media. Right. And it's not, it's not fun. Be for one, I'm focused on being present so i don't want to be on my phone all the time right. right i don't want especially you know when the kids are around it's like nope putting it down you know like but it's almost like you're forced to do it if you want to be known if we want to be known that we have to you know reach now yeah. out to the public and the best way to do that these is days is Using social you have media. To. But but because we have to use social media Ugh. and because we're also focused on a lot of this stuff with our kids, with the podcast, it's like yes. you can like I can tell when I've been fucking had. You know what I mean? When my goal was to upload a video and five minutes later I noticed that my thumb is just fucking scrolling, I'm like, they fucking got me. Yep. Because before I could upload a video, I watched mm -hmm. a video. Right. And that video suggested a video. Right. And then before you know it, you've been scrolling when you should have been posting about some shit. Right. Now, I had a purpose going into social media. Right. And I got fucking tricked. Right. A lot of times people, like kind of you were saying, like with the drugs, alcohol, and all that other stuff, it's it's like a numbing thing. Instead of, you know, taking a hit or taking a drink or whatever... You fucking open social media and it's just you start scrolling. Yep. And next thing you know it, an hour has passed. Like serious. I And you've been had. Yep. You know, I sit with my phone beside my bed, but I could tell you that's not the first thing I do when I pick up. Like the first thing I do when I wake up. Yeah. Right? I mean, the first thing I'm doing when I wake up is I'm getting ready to go to the gym. <laughs> I wake up right. at five twenty. Yeah. I don't have time to pick up my phone. And a lot of times I don't want to pick up my phone. Right. Yeah. Like it's not oof. I leave it everywhere, don't I? Yeah. I leave it. I, I don't know where my your phone's always in your pocket. You it's attached to you twenty four seven. Mine mine is like, have you seen my phone? Do you know where it's at? Yeah. I just I I re, I refuse to but I have to. It, it ugh. Yeah. <laughs> this life today. It's annoying. It really is. Especially with, you know, what it is that we're that we're doing. And it seems like everything works that way today. Before we would hand out flyers or we would go door to door, which you still can do. But yeah, I mean, what's the fastest way? <laughs> social media, yeah. you know, social media. Before we get out of here, there's something that I just kind of wanted to mention because I've, I've felt it and I don't even get on social media that much. Like I do post stuff. I post the videos and I'll scroll through some things, but I don't really comment much. I don't post much. I don't do you a just, lot. You just, you look at a lot, but you don't comment and you don't post. N not even because I, I'll spend more time on YouTube watching stuff. Like I'll watch something maybe about fights or about podcasting or about, you know, 
uh, personal development, just different types of thought, like all kind. Of, I, I'll watch. I'll sit and watch more videos than I'll I'll scroll through Facebook, TikTok, and any of that other stuff. Um, but I think a lot of people they they feel like a guilt or like an obligation to have to fucking do something or say something or be on there for some reason. And I don't think that that's a good thing. What you know, you like when, if you get a notification or if you get a comment or like, oh, this is a moment. I should be posting this. These are all fucking things that oh, yes. we need to use to our benefit. You don't have to do shit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to post anything. You don't have to comment on anything. You don't have to like anything, you know, because I, I think like even people sometimes feel like, oh, did you see my, it's like, no, I didn't fucking see it. Not everybody spends every fucking minute on social media. Don't feel bad about that shit. Live your fucking life. And that's why I feel our podcast is taking a lot longer for it to get the following. Just to be honest. It's because fine. we both feel that way. You know, like we were at the fair. There's no post on social. I'll probably put them up today. I took some pictures. But it was because I love the memories. Right? And we have... We download all our pictures, but I did take pictures, but I didn't stop and post them on Facebook, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, I want to remember these moments. So you, yes, I will take a picture and every once in a while I'll do a Facebook live, but it's very rare these days because what's important to me is building those memories, the moments, sharing them with the kids, not being in our phone. So I will post them at times like days later. Yeah. Or if I remember. This is something that I don't think is a good thing. And I want to know if you've had this thought. Where you're having a moment, something's happening, and you're taking some pictures, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you don't post anything about it. Mm-hmm. Have you, or or maybe like while you're taking pictures, you're like, I don't really feel like posting. Yes. yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought like, well, if I'm not going to post it, you know, like I'm taking, I'm just taking pictures, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a feeling like, what's the point? Like I'm not even posting or something like that. You know what I mean? But I think people feel that sometimes it's like, like the reason that you're taking pictures is to post. Yes. You know what I mean? And for me, like I've got so many pictures that have never been posted of moments and hikes mm -hmm. and things that we've done that Why? nobody's yes. ever going to see. Like I'll see it and right. we'll see it when we sit down and go through our files and yes. we're like, oh, you remember that? That was mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. That's not for everybody. I've had that feeling only because... Your family lives in New York and in Florida. Yes. That's and so I like posting pictures so that they can see the kids growing. And I've had that feeling that you've had because of It's more that. of a social media thing. It's like, oh, I yeah. should be posting this. Like, this is a moment to share. Yeah. And I think that's like a social media fucking, I don't know if that's being <laughs> that's, ingrained that's, into us. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. We've talked about this before. They have <gasps> the smartest fucking people mm -hmm. working at these places. Yes. And if you think like that is why when we have a goal to go post something and 10 minutes later, you're still scrolling. It's because they fucking know you. It, it, we were watching something that it, it is so fucking scary because we feel like we are so unique. And we are so individual people. When we're not. But the right. thing is that when Facebook starts their algorithm or any of these companies, mm -hmm. whatever, they they get a profile of somebody that's 39, that's into jujitsu, <laughs> that's into David Goggins, mm -hmm. that's into Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. that's into... The, you're going to... How many fucking guys in the world are like that? And you think you're so unique, Right. Right. Whatever those guys are watching, guess who gets suggested that too? And who probably clicks on the same exact shit? Me. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like and they, they, know. they know exactly. They study this shit. This is just like we we may study fucking coaching, podcasting, whatever the fuck else. Mm -hmm. This is their thing. And they are good at it. Right. And we need to take that into account and live our lives. Because everything is a race 
to get everybody's attention, more attention. Meanwhile, we're life missing is everything. happening. We're missing everything. And you're not there. I want to read this. Um, it's a post that I put up on September 15th. Uh, but it says, we are no different than our neighbors. We are no different than the homeless man that lives in the park or the woman working the corner so she can buy the drug that her body aches for or the elderly lady that lives by herself and feels lonely. We all have some kind of trauma we struggle with. Some of us take the leap to question our pain. We start looking for answers and are willing to revisit the pain so we can start the healing process while others mask it with drugs, alcohol, sex, porn, food, TV, shopping, etc. What separates us is the choices we make and the actions we take which produce our results. We are more alike than different. We are all divine. We are all one. We are all connected. We all want to feel loved, to be loved. We all we all want to have inner joy. We all want inner peace. We are not different. We we are the same. Love each other with no conditions, no judgments. Have empathy for each other. Be there for each other. Just love. Yeah. You don't get this with being on social media. You understand? Yeah. You don't you're missing everything. Yeah, it's just, yeah, but it's, it's like you have to retrain yourself because we've been so conditioned. And that's the first thing is realizing that, that there is something different that you can think different, like that you've been programmed, right? We have been trained. We've been programmed since the beginning. Trained is a better word. Cause then it hits people in the gut. What do you mean? I've been trained. <laughs> well, I don't know if it sounds good that you've been programmed <laughs> either. You know? yeah. I don't like being programmed. Like, but that's you got to start thinking outside the box. You got to slow down. You got to start to pay attention. Yeah. That's what it is. You got to pay attention. And you know, if you find yourself because we catch ourselves doing it. Right. I just said it. Yeah. yeah you know, we catch it, it's good. being present. It's being aware. And once you start to have those moments, they will come more frequent. That's what it is. We are aware now. Yeah. We pay attention to our thoughts, to our actions. We pay attention. Therefore, it, t- it t- gives us it, it takes less time. To catch ourselves when we're not being present. When we are on social media and, and you know, like you said, you go in there, you have a you mission, you knew what you were going to do. And all of a sudden you find yourself going through, just scrolling through all the posts, all the posts. And then you're like, what am I doing? Is it better to be ignorant of it all? No, no, because you miss out on living. But a lot of times, even still, you know, but you're still stuck sometimes. And then it's even worse because you know. But the great thing about it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> is that you can get yourself unstuck. Yeah. You have to make like, that decision. At any time. At any point in time. You know, like Coach C was telling me because I was beating myself up, you know, for, for gaining, I don't even know, 15 pounds, whatever it may be. He's like, Sonia. He's like, and then what happened? He's like, once, you know, you were having fun, right? You were eating whatever you want to eat, you're doing whatever you wanted to do after you were having fun and your God within started to tell you, hey, it's time to get back on track. Hey, hey, hello. And you listened. And now what are you doing? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Stop being so hard on yourself. It's okay. And he told me, he's like, I was like that. He's like, I was so focused on my outer appearance. I was always huge. He was always fit. What did you call it earlier? I don't know. You called it something. Jacked. jacked. He was always jacked. Brolic. Right? He was brolic. And he's like, and right now, he's like, I go to the gym, you know, what did he say? Four days out of the week. He said, but right now, I'm okay with, I think he said like, 225 or something like that yeah right and he has a belly right and he's like i'm okay with this he's like because right now i'm enjoying going out to eat with my you know with my circle i'm okay with having drinks 
in my circle. Like I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm still going to the gym though. He's like, I'm okay where I'm at. He's like, and one day I might wake up and want to get back to, you know, where I was, but I'm not going to kill myself doing it just so I can look good on the outside. Cause the inside is what really matters. As long as I'm eating, you know, like he's eating healthy as well. When I'm there, he's on eating fruit. He's having his shakes, but he's not going to stop. He's like, I, you know, if I'm asked to go out to eat, you know, we go out. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to have what I want. Yeah. I think there's a balance in everything. Exactly. But when it comes to health and fitness and eating right and being in shape there, mm-hmm. it's, it, there's something different about it. There's something different about going off because there's. Like, yeah, it feels good or whatever. Like, let's say, what if I just make the decision that fuck it, I'm done with working out. I'm done with all that shit and I'm just going to do what feels good. I'm going to eat what feels right. good. I'm going to do what tastes good. You know, I'm going to eat what tastes good. I'm going to do what feels good mm-hmm. and fuck the rest of it because this is, you got one life to live and yeah. this is it. Yeah. But there's something about being in shape and working right. out that changes things. Because you are now educated. You are now aware you're awake, you're woken right? to where your inner God is not going to let you stay there for long because you're going to start to feel not like yourself. And when that happens, because you're present, because you're awake, you're going to listen to that. Maybe, you're not going to stay people there. Are different. I don't know. It's just like, yeah. I won't stay there. Right. I get to a certain point and I'm like, this doesn't feel good. Yeah. Like I need to get back, not because of the outer appearance before I was all about the outer appearance, right? Like I got to look good, you know, for everybody else. Now it's yeah. like, I need to feel good. Like I need to feel good. And if feeling good for me, I know feeling good for me is probably at like 136, right? When I'm there. Pretty fucking specific, would you? Because I know, because I know. Five. Because I've been 115 right, yeah. and it was very hard to stay at 115, you know, and that that's really skinny for me, for me, I feel right. Yeah. But where when I'm my best, where I'm able to enjoy life and 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 feel good and look good is at 136. Not 135. No, 136 that's too, is that's it. Too much. Well, dude, 136 is, is it. Too much. But that's lifting and I don't weigh myself. Miguel weighs himself every day i do what not I'm do that people are different right like you you're like oh i can't do that i can't weigh myself every like i don't give a fuck i just weigh myself every it, day yeah and days it goes up days it goes down but for yeah. me it's like all right it's a gauge like all right i, right. I, I, I can't be fucking around today because i need yeah. you know but i don't take it like you see me it, i'm like fuck it went up but it's not like it ruins my day it's just like it was one of those days yeah and I well need to too watch you're it. you're on a different focus Right. Because yeah, you're competing. It's so it, it, it's different. But even if I wasn't, if it was just a goal, I've done that yeah. before, too. And it doesn't yeah. bother me. Yeah. No, I can't. I'm lifting heavy right now. So I know I'm going to be heavier because of the muscle. Yeah, you know, you, so as long as I'm you were bulking feeling, at the fair. <laughs> that's what I told me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm bulking. <laughs> and then the following it's day, okay. It's yep, okay. I'm Saturday morning, I got up and I lifted and that's good. I, I had a good Fuck ass yeah, workout. That's you know, awesome. so and then I come home and I'm feeling like the incredible Hulk. How am I walking in? <laughs> you fucking walking in, Jack. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's like when you walk in after your first workout you're right. like fuck can you see this do you guys see this that's, that's how i feel i feel like my legs are, yeah i'm gonna need to buy a bigger shirt <laughs> so it can contain all these muscles <laughs> and with that make sure you guys go to opposites and track podcast.com share with the people that you know thank you guys for listening yes, uh, yes. when you guys go to our website you guys can see the ways that you can support the show the ways that you can follow the show we definitely appreciate you guys supporting us Thank you for your love. Yep. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching Opposites Attract Podcast. Where we get better. Together. Bye. Bye.